Not Shit Live podcast. Video podcast tonight. We are double duty in it. We are doing podcasts, YouTube video, all in one. So as you see, I'm Zach Sarver. We've got Dwayne Sturgill, as always. Everyone should know his face. And Dr. Brandon Buskell. Dr. Graham Hall. <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> How you guys doing? Oh, good, man. Right, I'm pumped about doing this. Yeah. Yeah, we're all pretty excited. So, folks, all of us are going to Idaho this year. So if you did not see why Dwayne and I are going to Idaho and not Wyoming, go back and listen to a previous podcast episode and um, see what happened to us, see our, our misfortunes and kind of what our initial thoughts were and some things that we are going to change. But in this video and podcast, we are going to look at all of our gear. So we're going to look through our packs, show you guys what we're taking with us and kind of compare and maybe Dwayne and I will see something that one of us has that the other one doesn't need to take. If we've got some double something, maybe we can get by with not taking it and save some weight. Who see? Who knows? Well, already in talking, you know, we, we identified just a couple things that we actually didn't even get yet. Uh, tarp. Got to get a tarp. Um, and then we identified definitely a massive weight discrepancy between my pack and Zach's pack. We can talk about that more in a minute, but... Uh, there are some other items that we don't have yet. You know, we don't have our guns out. Yeah. Uh, I think something that we did consider as part of the weight was our clothing. You know, and, and that's literally going to be on us. So, you know, not as much clothing is going to be in the bags when we're actually packing in as it is right now. So, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but uh, kind of wanted to do this to give ourselves a really good idea of how it's going to feel and what it's going to look like. And uh, give you guys a good idea too of uh, of what we got when we're packing in, because obviously you know we're going to film our whole hunt and, and all that, and have a video after that. So try to take everybody along with us for the whole whole experience. And this is just part of it. So, Buster, are you going to record while you're up there this year? Any video? I will. Yes, I've actually already started recording now a little bit about my uh, workout routine to prepare for this trip. And uh, we'll definitely record some now. I recorded a lot last year, but unfortunately we didn't get anything, so it kind of is wasted video for the moment, I suppose. Yeah, you got some good video this year, though. And the cool yeah. thing about our hunt in Idaho that we're going to have is that Zach and I will be hunting. We're going to have a different hunt going on in a different place at the same time that Brandon and another one of his buddies is going to be having at a you know different location. So you're going to have different experiences and... and uh, Pressure's on for everybody. We all got to make sure we get good footage and That's make right. sure we uh -huh. track all this stuff good so we can show people what's happening. Well, one thing I like about that plan is you guys will be a little south of where I am. Mm -hmm. So if you're just having this fantastic hunt and there's game everywhere, you know, I'm hoping that you all will call me <laughs> and leave a voicemail uh, so when I'm on top of a mountain north of your position, I'll get this voicemail. If I'm not seeing anything, I'll know where I need to go south and, and vice versa. versa. Yeah. So I think it's going to be good. It's sort of like you're yeah. you know, got somebody scouting for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have an in reach. Actually, speaking of, I plugged it in to charge it and it totally doesn't charge. So the battery's shot. Oh, man. Yeah, I was kind of upset about that. I got to gotta talk to Garmin and see what I need to do other than buy a new one, which I don't want to do. So with you guys being there, I know we, we know where you all are going to be. Mm -hmm. And you've got pretty decent cell phone service there. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, actually, it's better than where we're sitting tonight for this video. Sure. But, Dwayne, I, I don't know if you, I, you probably didn't look at the map. I'm pretty sure we're going to be um, in tough money as far as cell phone coverage Not is concerned. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it, it may have little bits and pieces, but I, I'm pretty sure we will have nothing. We might get surprised, but I'm pretty sure we will have nothing. So I'm going to, I probably will get the unlimited texting plan for Garmin. Since you guys are going to be there, if it was just us and like texting our spouses and stuff, probably wouldn't. But right. you know, we we want to be able to keep up with you guys. Oh yeah, yeah. So absolutely, it sounds great. So let's. Do you want to go talk about just weight of these packs? Sure. Yeah. Good one. So mine is is beastful. Um, it's probably very similar in weight to the last time that we went because I tried to pack every freaking thing that I possibly could. It was just all the wrong things that I was packing. But uh, it is 56 pounds. My pack is 56 pounds. I can pick it up and kind of get it on the back. Ugh. This is an Eberly stock, just one pack. 
I need to get down on my knees so everybody can see. But uh, 56 pounds. I literally have everything in this pack though. Uh, everything that we need. I've got I've got the tent. I've got the titanium stove. I've got all of my clothing. I've got food. Um, uh, a hatchet, saws, bone saws, bags. I'll show all that. But like this is everything that I will need. So obviously this is to pack in. This is not what my pack is going to look feel like the whole week. You know, we get packed in, take a day or so, get hiked in, and uh, I'll unload it. And that's the cool thing about the just one pack, which I'll show that as I'm unloading everything, is that it uh, it adapts to whatever size you need it to be. Zach, your pack was what? 36. So before I talk about mine, what's going to be good, so with, your, with the weight of yours, by the time you pull off your optics, you're going to be well under... The, the weight limit for the plane. So you're, you're going to be able to fly with yours, pull your optics and your carry-on that will be with you because you're not going to just... Oh, absolutely. Spin. Yeah, I do have my... I've got my spotter and I have my um, my binoculars and my rangefinder in here. So that will definitely be in my yep. carry-on when we're flying. And w So that, this is going to be different from us because last time we went, we mailed our stuff. Mm -hmm. And just... We're not going to be driving that direction and it, you know, it was just extra time that we didn't want to add. So you've been able to get all of yours and still be under the weight limit. Mine's well under the weight limit. What is the weight limit? It's 50 something. Is that, do you remember? I honestly can't remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 50 something. We'll have to double check before just to make sure. Yeah, but it's like 50 something pounds. Call. I, I know that I weighed my, my suitcase last year, I was like three pounds under whatever it was. And it was like 50 something, I think. Yeah. So yeah, with, you, you'll be set. You don't have to pay a, Absolutely, a large yeah, baggage fee. Several, thing, so. several things here, because of course you're carrying on. You can get a crap ton of stuff in that. And then with our with the double rifle cases last year, uh, you know, obviously if you just put your rifle in it, that's no weight hardly at all. And I, both of us, and I'm sure you do the same thing, crammed it full of clothing. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely yeah. Fine. So you just load too. your rifle case full of clothing too. Yeah, so that's going to be good. And I think that'll help just... We're definitely more consolidated. Better choices, but more consolidated. So, I've got the Everly Stock Team Elk Pack. So mine's 36 pounds, and this has just about everything in it, all the big stuff. I do have a, a solar panel that I did not bring. I carried it with me last time. I didn't pull it out. I probably would not pull it out again. The only reason I'm considering bringing it is like for the inReach. Because the solar panel charges so freaking slow. Like, it's probably not going to charge my battery pack that I'm taking. But knowing that, like, we probably, you know, after four days, we're going to be relocating via truck, probably. I figured at that point, recharge all the gadgets in the vehicle on, on the way to the next location, hopefully. And should get us good for the rest of the rest. So I don't think I need the solar panel. I will reconsider, you know, just, just based on how I'm feeling right before we leave, but it, it weighs nothing. It's just, and it's it's like the size of a computer monitor, basically. So it's it's not a big deal. I did test it though before we went. It did work, but I don't think I think it's uh, it's overkill. It was probably a waste of a hundred bucks, but you know, I'll save it for a future trip. Right. I have got a Mystery Ranch Metcalf. Let's see if we can see this thing here. It is currently 30 pounds, although my water bottle is empty, and I've only got about one day's worth of food in it currently. So let's just say it would really be about 35 pounds, I believe, if I was going. I've got four, about four pounds of that is a, uh, a little tent I carry, but I only take it if I think it's going to rain or if the bugs are going to be bad. So it kind of depends on exactly what the forecast is. I may leave that out. If that's the case, I ditch about four pounds, which is nice. And, uh, but, you know, I'll probably just replace that four pounds with some more clothing or a little extra something. I'll, 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 I'll cram it in there. You're making somewhere. me and Zach feel like pansies, man. Yeah. Because we've got to have a, our titanium stove and our big thick wall tent and all that kind of right. crap. Right. I just take a little, I just have a little tiny uh, MSR, I think they call it a pocket rock, 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 rocket. Uh, That's what I have. A little red one. MSR. I just take that yeah, and one rocket. canister of fuel yeah. and I take a little cup. Or pocket water. light or something like that. It's pocket something. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't take a lot. It's it's, pretty, it's fairly Spartan. It's not going to carry too much. We just got burnt last time, man. It was just so 
I mean, you know, down in the, the teens, the first yeah. three days we were there and snowing and wind blowing 20 and 30 mm -hmm. miles an hour. I know that was very atypical, but... Yeah. Now, I just have a 30 degree bag on here right now. And I just picked that just because I always have my sleeping bag strapped on the outside. I just find that regardless of which bag it is, it takes up too much room on the inside yeah. for me. So whether it's a zero degree bag or this 30 degree bag or something in between, mine's going to be latched on the outside and it's not really going to affect yeah. anything that I can put inside the bag. Now if I was going literally for just one night and I wanted to take this pack, yeah, I could probably cram a sleeping bag in there because we're not going to need that much stuff. But um, part of this is empty right now. This lid is empty. I can fill that full. I'm sure I'll probably fill it full of something. Because you know, you always have those last minute things. Like, oh, I'll take this predator call in case the deer hunting is slow. <laughs> I'll take this, I'll take that. There's always something you want to cram in there. That's the dangerous thing about having a really big bag. I started to buy the uh, uh, Marshall, which is about, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 6,500 square inches. But you know, if I did, I would just cram so it's it big, full. It's bigger was, than that. It's bigger than this. I would just cram it full. It would be that much more weight. And uh, I'd just, just slow myself down. Yeah, I, I like Dwayne's pack. I think mine's a little small. I mean, I've got all my stuff in it, other than my food. So I don't have any of my food in there. Um, and it's got all my clothes, which is taking up the entire main compartment. Like, literally the whole thing. So all that's going to be on me. But I still feel like it's a little small. It's it's fine, like, running around, like, mm -hmm. for, like, even a weekend, I think it would be fine. And so for the couple days that we're probably planning, it'll be totally fine. And I think maybe, you know, if we're going to go like to Canada or Alaska or something like I, I probably would want to switch packs by then but I'm just not in love with this pack it's not the most comfortable thing on me either right. I just don't it's not a huge fan it, I do like the compartments so compared to yours mine has lots of like inside compartments and that's good just to shove and keep some stuff organized I do really like that yeah. I'm, I, initially I said with this just one pack that I did wish it had a little more compartments like that but but I'll pro I think I'm going to retract that at this point after using this so much. Because what happens when you've got so many pockets, for, m for me personally, is you forget where you plug stuff. Yeah. So like on this now, I've got my system of where I know where I cram things. And I, and I like the just one because, uh, which we'll see when we start breaking it apart, you know, this whole piece right here, basically half of what you see right here is the duffel bag. And that completely zips off, and you can totally take that off, and you can either leave the main compartment then opened up, and it still holds a lot, or you can zip the main compartment in the front and make it really a pretty, a pretty small bag, really. So the just one, and I guess that's why they call it the just one. Mm -hmm. The idea is you just need one pack when you have this one. I'm definitely satisfied. It's not the lightest pack ever, I know that, and I'm sure that contributes some to my overall weight too, that it is not a light pack, but it doesn't bother me. We ready to break into them? Break into it. Let's see what you got in there. I'm anxious to see Can we go first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, for the rest, so you know, this is a full size spotter that I'm, you know, this, that I, 80 millimeter, I, I don't have to take this, I know I don't have to. But, uh, you know, me and I, we just had such a negative experience the last time. I, I intentionally want to be way over prepared this time. Same. I want to Same. I want to have stuff in camp that I probably don't need, but I'm glad I've got it. <laughs> right. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Same that time. I totally yeah. realize that. I absolutely realize that. Even down to the hatchet that I bought that I'm bringing this time. I've got a super light wood saw, but I'm bringing a friggin' hatchet too. Right. Just because that was frustrating last time to only have a wood saw and to not have a hatchet. I got you. So, you know, I just, I, I realize I've gone a little overboard. Honestly, though, I don't think as much water and, like, dumb stuff, you know, we had a friggin' 10, 10 pound crap Walmart tent and just the dumb stuff we had last time. I probably don't have, we didn't get to weigh my pack last time. But we've got pictures, you know, I look stupid walking in, but it was just like all the wrong stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And that heater body suit, the heater body suit is 10 pounds. Yeah, it's huge. So you know, you've got a 10 pound big roll of that, so. Yep. Anyway, I'll quit talking. 
I, I think, I'm sure people out there will think I'm crazy, but uh, it's me camping in the mountains, not you. So I'll pack what I want to pack. And I'll tell you, you just need to man up too. How about that? <clears throat> but the just one. Alright, so let's break in. Break into it. I'll get into the duffel part first. Alright, I got the Big Agnes Air Core Ultra sleeping pad. That was after two failed attempts at... Uh, this is the one I took to Idaho the last time. Coincidentally, this one is not terrible as far as keeping you warm, but it's just frustrating. It's ultra light, but it's frustrating because it is not packable. And it's... Uh, though it does have a good insulation factor, it, it just is not padding for a big fat boy. So my 230-pound frame squished right straight into the ground with that. So that was not cool. I had uh, upgraded to a another inflatable sleeping pad. I think I've got 30 bucks in that. I probably got 40 bucks in this. And uh, it was, it's only about this thick when you blow it up. And it's the same problem, man. I lay on it. And I took, I've taken this camping already, thankfully. And um, it's just insufficient. I just squish it right down. You know, uh, doesn't work. So I, I got probably 75 or 80 bucks in this big Agnes, which once you blow it up is like this thick. This thing is a beast. I've slept on it already. It is fantastic. So my buy once, cry once philosophy, Zach, that we talk about so often on, on the podcast I've got 80 bucks in this, and then between these two pieces of crap, I've got 80 bucks. So now I have spent uh, $160, half of which could have completely been avoided if I would have just bought the good thing to begin with instead of trying to go cheap. So I think that's a good point. A lot of the people that I hear say, I hate camping, or I went backpacking and it was awful, it was terrible, they had the cheapest gear, the cheapest Crap bag, like the cheapest tent, and it's heavy and it's bulky and it doesn't insulate you as well. Yeah, of course, I do understand that they don't want to drop, you know, large amounts of cash on the finest gear if they're new to the to the sport or the you know the trail because uh, they don't know if they're going to like it or not. But so it's almost make or break, though. Really, your your rest at night, and I'm proof. I, we've learned this the hard way, me yeah. and Zach both. Your rest at night is so pivotal because you've had this very long, hard, arduous day. Mm -hmm and potentially, like air hunt, a terrible, horrible, long, very cold, arduous day, and then if your gear is crap, yeah, and it doesn't you allow you to rest, then yeah, you're you've wrong. totally agree. wasted your time, I wasted agree. your money. But I have tried this bad boy out. I've not got to try it out in super cold weather, but I have laid on it on a hard floor and, and, and slept on it a little bit. And like I said, when I, when I blow it up, it's that thick. Uh, it's great, big Agnes. And it's not big. It's not big either. It's not huge. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, and this is just like you said about your sleeping bag. I could have easily put my sleeping bag in this, just clipped it on the outside, and saved some room if I needed to. So, yeah. Totally could have done that. Uh, I went ahead and I did took I took your advice. I had actually said on a podcast earlier in the year that I was not going to upgrade from the heater bodysuit, but you talked me into it. This is the best movie. Yeah, I tried. So, and he ignored yeah. my advice. Yeah, this He's is like yeah. Doctor Buskell was the key, I guess. Well, Doctor, when movie. Doctor Groundhog speaks, you listen. <laughs> so the Doctor Groundhog I spoke. Older, so I got the Marmot um, lithium. Right? Lithium. Yeah. yeah. He, he knows what I got, and I don't even know what I got. <laughs> it is a it is a zero degree bag. Uh, again, it is small and compact for what what you get. Um, I've not slept in it yet, but I know it's real big and puffy. It's 800 weight down, so if it doesn't do a great job and surpass my heater body suit, I will be exceedingly disappointed. But uh, manned up and I got that. So, Marmot, lithium, zero degree bag. Here is the Lux Outdoor uh, Megahorn TP tent. Obviously, this is a significant portion of the weight of my overall kit. Um, nine pounds, does that sound right from what I told you guys? I think that's what you told me. Nine pounds just in the tent. Um, got the tent poles in here. Also, 
they are aluminum, so they are super duper lightweight. And then the titanium stove, which was four or five pounds, something like that. Like I said, you guys might be making fun of me and be like, you don't need all that crap. You ain't me. Don't judge me. Who makes the stove? You don't know me. Uh, it's it, This is the Lux. So oh, same company. company. Yeah, okay. same company. Um, and it has a name. I don't remember what it is, though. But this is the Lux stove and then the Lux outdoor mega horn tent. I think that's going to be a game changer for you guys, honestly. I've never yes. got to use a uh, stove in a tent like that before. I think that's going to be big time. Well, one guy commented when I, when I did my video on YouTube, and he said, Ah, oh, that's a waste of time. You're somebody, you need a third person to just run and get wood all night. And my comment to him was, you know, man, like, if Zach and I could have just had something warm while we were falling asleep. Exactly. That would yeah. have been fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't have if, to burn. If the right. wood will last, if it will burn me a fire for 30 minutes, man, just mm -hmm. to let us go to sleep, that's, then, that's yeah. gold. You know, you don't need something to keep you warm all night. That, you're in your bag, but... The crappy thing about it was, you know, which again, we had unseasonably cold you did. temperatures and weather. It was very, very bad. But, you know, you've got 15 degree weather and you're huddled around this campfire and then you got to go to the tent that's ice cold. You know, if you could have just been able to leave the campfire and go to, to a nice warm tent, even if it just, like I said, 30 minutes, gave you some time to fall asleep, right. then that mission accomplished right there. So... I don't expect it to stay going all night long. It's just just about the little comforts, man. And then we had that one night, you know, 30 mile an hour winds, like literally nonstop. Insane. I don't know that I've ever been in anything like that in my life. Um, I think we both agreed that that was the most uncomfortable that we yes. had ever been. Well, you couldn't start a campfire in 30 mile an hour winds. Not only right, yes. can you not do it, it's unsafe to try to do it. Right. So if we had this tent with this stove, fire would have been no problem. So I am very content to have this and don't mind the weight packing it in. You know, what if our boots, what, what if the waterproofing fails and we have wet socks? You know, throw the socks over the stove, dry them off yep. real quick and you know, we're inside and warm. Yep. So I think it's a great choice. I'm yep. glad. You, you would debate not getting this. You went back and forth a few times. I figured you'd probably end up getting it, but yeah, I'm glad you decided to, to get this, this combination. Well, I'm just erring on the side of caution. Yes. And this year, well, you know, we the, the, the two years ago when we went, we got our butts whipped in every single way possible. We made dumb decisions. We just got whipped, unseasonably cold. So now this year, we're if we're over-prepared, then maybe the net, you know, this will at least show us, okay, well, maybe you really don't need that. Yeah. You do need this. Yeah. But, but I can tell you for sure, I don't want to go again and be like, oh crap, I wish I did have that thing. Mm -hmm. Right, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Not, not doing that. Not doing that. So, Here's some more stuff that I don't have to have, but I'm taking. This is a carbon fiber tripod. So it weighs like nothing. But then my... Uh, this is my Night Force TS-82 spotter. This is my Night Force TS-82 spotter. Uh, overkill. Probably is overkill. Son of a bitch. Making me some good editing going on here. This is my TS-82 Night Force. Uh, you know, overkill, probably. Six pounds, eight pounds in this whole rig. Will I regret it? We will find out because I am taking it. So, you know. Well, once you're there and it's set up, you're going to love it. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to think about carrying it or carrying it out. I have no idea there. But once you're there and you're using it, I'm, I'm sure you're going to love it. What's not to love about that thing? Right. It's spectacular. So, just, you know, stay tuned to Hunt She Live and you'll find out after her hunt whether all this stuff was a terrible decision or not. Now here's one of the cool things about the just one bag. All of that crap that I just showed you was stowed either in or behind this duffel. And what I do when I'm not using this duffel is just roll it up and it's, it zips on the front of the bag. It's made to zip on the front. 
when I'm not using I just roll it up and I cram it down in the bottom in case I do kill something or whatever and I need to slap that on. But obviously during once we pack in during the main part of the hunt on a daily basis I'm not going to have this. But uh, or it won't be zipped on. It'll be in my pack in the bottom. I guess some of this stuff I can show. Some of this is nifty. Got a Havel on for the fine tuning of the cape. If I kill something and have to do that, I would love to break that out. I keep cotton balls dipped in Vaseline. Good fire starter. Really good fire starter. Used that last time and that was a good purchase good or a good take. Of course, I got a lighter uh, and I got my headlamp. Put that on this uh, little front thing. I meant to put my bladder in its actual compartment and I forgot until I had all this crap already on here. So I crammed it in this compartment right here. But this year I'm, I'm still doing the bladder, the water bladder. Um, I am going to do, I'm actually going to take this off of my main line and put the put the actual regular sucker on and I'm going to use this um, and I'm going to filter it as I squeeze it into my bag and then when I drink out of my bag that's already going to be filtered water so and uh, one of the reasons for doing that is because we had lots of problems with these freezing last time so I'm going to keep my Sawyer like in my bag where I can keep it in a warm spot that's my solution. We'll see if it works. Zip. Sub. Wipes. Gotta have them. Nature calls. A very lightweight blow up seat pad. And maybe when somebody kills something and you have to gut it, there's you some gloves. Thankfully, though, if you don't feel anything, it's not a lot of weight taken up. Uh, I guess I'll do the outside first before we break into the inside. Over here on this side, I just sort of have a representation of what kind of food I'm going to take. Obviously, I had a crap ton of space left in my top here. I'll put more, I will have more food in that. This stuff is super light. These Mountain House dehydrated meals. This is one of my favorites. Chicken and rice. Take the old freeze-dried coffee. I've got a little lightweight Yeti cup. Works really well. I've got one of these little cups, bowls that fold out. A lightweight fork spoon deal. And then uh, I've got this is the like the pocket rocket that, that you were talking about. I've got that. And uh, this screws on top of this which fits in your bowl, which then sets on top of that. So it's a neat little deal to boil your stuff. Over here on this side, I've got the, more of the camping and the kill related items, game bags, duct tape, my knife, some ties, zip ties, paracord, uh, a bone saw slash wood saw and then a good hatchet because we do have of course the titanium stove and I want to be able to prep and get some firewood. And then finally the main compartment. And this is just one bag is insane. I've still got room in those side compartments that I could have been putting stuff. I got my B Nox and my range finder. Of course, in a lot of this stuff that I'm going to pull out here, I will actually have it on when we're hiking in. Probably not all of it, but a lot of it. I just want to show you guys some of the stuff that I take. Uh, just wool, gloves. Uh, that's fleece, isn't it? Rag wool outside yeah. fleece inside, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's rag wool on the outside fleece inside, that's right. Those are really, really good gloves. Uh, some darn tough socks. Merino t-shirt. Merino undies. And I swear to you, if you, I'd say this would be the only pair of underwear that I would have to have all week, really, if I wanted to. 
I don't know what kind of wicked magic that wool has, but it just it just don't stink. You did. It keeps the boys smelling good. Um, on to the more technical gear. I do. This is this is some long johns, some fleece long johns. Uh, I keep a polar weight, like super duper heavy weight fleece, long sleeve top, just in case. And then my technical gear that I do wear a crap ton. I wear this a lot. This is going to be the stuff that gets worn a whole lot. This is a First Light uh, Klamath hoodie. Love that thing. I've got the First Light Cirrus lightweight puffy jacket, which that is also very good if it's if it's super cold. And you're, and you're hiking, so you need a little bit more in your hiking. Um, or if it's not too awfully cold and you're sitting in glass, and it's just that really good lightweight piece of, of, of puffy gear. These are the pants I'll have on. These are the, what are they? Catalyst. Catalyst. First Light Catalyst pants. Again, this all of this crap that I'm pulling out contributed to the weight of my pack, and it's not going to be in my pack when I'm going in. I'm going to have it on. Uh, I won't have this stuff on. This is the Uncompagre Puffy Zip-Ons. Love those. Got to run those this past deer season. Those are fantastic. And then this bad boy right here is the Chamberlain nice. 800 Field Down First Light Jacket. That's and I also got to run this this past deer season. And it is fantastic. It is oh, primo. Uh, love this bad boy. Got some feathers coming out. I would like to have one of those, but I hate to drop coin on the year at the moment. Well, sure, boy, it's nice. As of today, First Light has financing. I saw oh, yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, I see that email. Yeah, yeah. So I you can you that. can finance and. Yeah. Um, but don't they break it into three payments or something? And that kind of what the gist is, I believe. But it was three months at zero percent interest. I don't know if you can spread it out further than that, okay. but it's That's at true. least that much. I got you. Well, you know, this is a tough year. A lot of people have been out of work or at least have had their work hours mm -hmm. altered. Yeah. So I can see where they have to do something like that to uh, I mean it ultimately it makes helps them out. So yeah. I mean some people were saying it was kind of sketchy that they were doing that. I don't I mean it gives an, another well, option. You can right. finance jewelry. Why couldn't you finance I don't see an issue with it. And I would rather have a bunch of first light clothing than I would jewelry. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, no doubt about it. <laughs> well before I shut up I just wanted to show you guys why this thing is called the Just One Pack. Everly stock, just one. So you saw I took that crazy huge duffel off and it had the meat compartment that was opened up in the front, but it allows you to zip that up. And once you zip that up, you've still got, then you've got a, what it, it makes a small front compartment. And what was a minute ago, a bag holding a crap ton of stuff turns into a really super nice small day bag. Love my just one bag. on y'all now. All right. I'll go. Yeah, um, see what you got. I'm next in weight, and so we've got some of the stuff I don't have because you've got. Like, I'm not going to have a tent. I'm not going to have a stove. Yeah, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be very right. smart. So, let me grab some stuff that's over here. So, food. This is not my pack. I'm not going to take this box. Just happen to have, I have two boxes of these, actually. So I bought one before we went to Idaho. We came back and Black Friday or Cyber Monday or something, mm -hmm. they ran a special on these. Mm -hmm. And it got like, what, like 20 year shelf life or something stupid. Right, yeah. So I'm like, why not? I'm gonna use them eventually. So I bought another big tub of these things. They give me horrendous gas, like <laughs> deafening gas. I don't know which one it is. I'm thinking it's that, um, that Chili Mac. I'm pretty sure that's the one that gets me the worst. So I might swap with you, Dwayne, once we're there. Swap out some There's only ones. one that I can't eat, and it's not because of gas. It's just because it makes me puke, and it's the chicken Alfredo. And I love chicken Alfredo, but the the Mountain House or whatever, I don't even know if that's the Mountain House. I've got some other brand. Maybe it's a brand thing. It's disgusting. <laughs> Both those are terrible to me. There was one. It was okay. I, I think I ate one of those. It was okay. Hey, every one that I've got. I mean, I'm not saying I loved it. It was okay. <laughs> you got pretty tired of the beef stroganoff, though. Did, are you going to... Get no, I'm ready variety. for that again. Okay. I'm ready for that again. It's been a little bit. Chicken and rice. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on all of them, except 
Chicken Alfredo. I absolutely will not eat chicken Alfredo. I, do, I will say, I'm going to pick up some of the breakfast and desserts. I have none of those. So what I was doing for breakfast, I had um, just like Cliff Bars. I just mm -hmm. had a peanut butter Cliff Bar, which really did hit the spot. And I actually I probably Very will good. get those too. Very good. Um, they're kind of tough though whenever it's like 10 degrees outside. So that was a little, that was a little hard, literally. Yeah. But I do want some some of the blueberry oatmeal and that kind of the apple stuff. cobbler. Like I, I want some of those. So I'll probably pick up those at some point. Uh, maybe if we stop in Salt Lake City when we land. Because we got to get some MSR fuel too, mm -hmm. so maybe pick up some of those just when we're in a store. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You can't fly with that. These little fuel tanks, you can't fly with those. So yep. this is just to show you guys, but we will have to buy that when we get there. But one will do us for a week. I'm sure we'll probably buy two. I guess I can buy one. Well, I don't know. No, we need to buy two because remember we we ran out <laughs> last time. And had to try to go get more. I don't think we ran we, out. I we think we, we were so out. close to running out and Maybe. we didn't. Hmm. Could be true. I think we were so close to running and we actually never did. Could be true. I'd rather have one and not use it. And if we get it from, we can return it. Because you know, you, you did return that one, um, that one canister, didn't you? I think you did. We, we ran around and finally found a place. And, or you tried to return it and it was a different store. Whatever the case may be. So looking through mine. So, on the outside, got just like a snowboarding strap, which is just useful just to kind of um, just shove some random stuff in, if I can get it open. I'm just going to pull all this stuff out. So, I have trekking poles and my shooting sticks, which I bought off of Mr. Sturgill over there, which I did not have last time, and I may not, I probably will take them, because I've got all the adapters and whatnot. So I have Cascade Mountain Tech. These are just, I think these are carbon fiber. that They weigh almost nothing. Take both of these. Dwayne used one of mine last year, or two years ago, so um, I didn't see any, sh any um, trekking poles in your pack, Dwayne. Well, I was <laughs> hoping you were going to be bringing them again, man. Why do I need trekking poles when Zach only needs one? Tell you what, you just carry a trekking pole for him, let him carry that tent, that stove, call it a good trade. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Let the big man have the heavier pack. You got a few inches on me, so I mean, I think that's pretty fair, right? Your legs are about six inches longer than mine, so you can you can handle 20 more pounds, right? That looks completely my, my mind didn't go there when you said okay. I got a few inches oh. on you. <laughs> oh! Oh! Well. Oh, uh, sorry. Distracted. Yeah. Bog pods, red legged devil. Pretty nice. Have not actually not shot anything off of these yet because hunting season was not super great for me, but I have played with these. Very nice. Looking forward to using them. I have a few accessories and that kind of thing somewhere inside this pack. Um, do have this. Do not remember what this thing is called, so apologies. I will have it in the gear list whenever we post it, but my wife got this for me for my birthday. So this syncs up with Spotify. Pulls podcasts, I think audiobooks, and like your playlists, pulls them down, stores them so you can go offline, listen to music. So I've got just some some like cheapo headphones in my bag. <laughs> so if Dwayne is in a grumpy mood and not talking to me, I at least can have something to listen to. So nice. an audio book would be excellent. I would really, really, really like that at night while sleep. Like yeah, I missed it when you said that this, that that. I, goes I think offline and it's, it's totally nice. offline. I mean, yeah, totally, totally cool. offline. No phone. You know, you don't. You, you need the phone to pair it and sync the music. Right. And after that, you're done. Like, you don't need the phone anymore. That's so, cool. yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I should try to post a link to that. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it. I mean, yeah. she, she did good. She did really good. I remember seeing it a couple years ago, and I just, I'm like, I'm never going to use that. And then she bought it for me, and I was like, oh, I can use that now. Yeah. So it, it turned out pretty good. Cool. So digging in, I'm not super organized here, so sorry. Um, I have an Anchor Power Pack. I don't think I have listed in my gear list what this is either. This is the one I took with us. This is the biggest one at the time that you could fly with. So I charged all of our devices for a week on this thing. I did top it off in the truck you know, when we were driving into the into the Roche Motels. But still, they never charged all the way in that time. So I'm taking this with us again. It's got a couple different connectors, so i got to make sure I've got the ones that will fit your phone, that kind of thing. But, I mean, it's huge. And, I mean, like I said, it's... What's the weight like on that? 
It, it's pretty heavy. It's, it's a little bit heavy. It's heavy, but it's it's, man, it's not it's not ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, well, and you were considering about what you're getting out of it, and to charge oh, your yeah. video cameras, that's yes. We, that's going to be. We have nice. all of our Dwayne's camera charges off of USB. Yeah. Our cell phones, the inReach, this little thing. I mean, all of our stuff is USB driven now, so this this works pretty good. There are lighter ones now than this one. So this was, you know, two and a half years I got this. So the, there are newer ones that are the same. You know, milliamp size, but are just like, you know, this much of it. Gotcha. So they're smaller. You know, you guys can research. I'm not going to buy another one unless, for some reason, I find a good deal. I gotcha. But I use this at home all the time too, so this is good. When you were mentioning earlier, not taking that solar thing. Th this I is why I'm not taking it. Right, I forgot about that. I, there, that solar thing would be useless. The only reason That's would probably be, why we didn't use it last time. It was 100% why. This thing worked great. I mean, if if we were legit. You know, like if we had water where we're going to go and we were going to stay for a whole week, this may not do enough. Because, you know, we were topping our phones off in the truck and, you know, we were, had, we were plugging them in at night the couple nights we had hotels. So, you know, that saved a couple charge cycles that, you know, it, it may not have been sufficient for an entire week. But, I mean, everything else was great. I mean, the, the batteries and the inReach is like almost nothing. The cameras are nothing. It's really just our cell phones that are, that are the big battery hogs. So... Got a headlamp. So this is an Energizer headlamp. So not even like a fancy, fancy one. Mm -hmm. I like this one a lot because it's got a red light on it too. So just in case, sometimes I, I use that. Nothing real fancy. I have an inhaler. Just in case, because yeah, yeah. you know, you never know. My darn tough socks. So obviously this is not how I'm gonna pack this. I just literally shoved all my stuff in a bag. So one pair of darn tough socks. I do have new boots. Yes. So, crispy boots. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uninsulated. Nice. We will see. I'm I'm still nervous. I know that's I know that's what, what you run and what almost everybody recommends. I think you're starting insulated, right? Or you're uh, a little yeah, bit insulated. Yeah, it might have been a little something. Uh, 200 to 400, yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm a little nervous so. still. I'm not sure. Like, I, I think I've got some circulation issue. Cause, like, my hands and feet are cold all the time. So, I am going to get another pair of these but the heavier weight like they're legit heaviest ones they've got mm -hmm. and then if i can i'll double up if i absolutely have to because th these are a little big my feet are kind of narrow and these are a little bit wider but they're super comfortable very happy i've not gotten to hike in them yet worn around a little bit but like they they, they honestly feel like wearing like high top nikes or something like they really kind of feel like athletic shoes so i'm, I'm pretty happy hat can't get like the, the first light beanies and the Under Armour beanies. They don't fit my big melon. So this is like Walmart big headed melon with reversible toothbrush. And I, I don't have my prescription medications in here. I was not going to like divvy out a week's worth just to show on a video. But I will have all my prescription medications with me. Knife. Catalyst gloves. I may still, I have the ones that Dwayne's got. I might bring those as backups and leave in the truck. These are pretty good. I mean, I, I've worn them. Um, they, they felt very, very nice. I mean, they're, they're fleecy on the inside and, and they're tough on the outside too. That's oh yeah. Durable. It's a durable feel. Um, did, did you try those online? Yeah, I don't know if they're like small. That's what I was going to say. So the reviews on these things, they say they run a little bit small, especially in the thumb area. Yeah. I would have to get the next size up, but those still, yeah. feels, feels good. I could see how that would be a couple. I, I like them. I mean, I, like I said, I've not gotten to um, have those in extreme cold yet. What size is this? Man, I, I don't know. Probably like a, a medium or a large. I don't know if it says the size. Okay, let's see. Medium? Medium. Let's see if I ever have to order these. Yeah, I'm next size up probably. It goes a little tight into the web there. It's, it's a little bit short in the thumb. It's, it's, that's all people were saying. So, like, the rest of it feels good. But, like, my natural resting hand is kind of like this anyway. So, it felt fine. I mean, I, I don't see... And even, even, like, shooting and holding, like, it felt pretty natural for me. So, I, I felt that size was pretty good for me. I have a very crumpled up, wrinkled, printed dope chart. Because mm. I, I don't want to... It's on my phone. I've got it saved. So, I, I've got mine in Google Drive. And I, it's offline, so I don't have to have service. But... Like when I shot my buck on the club this year, I totally pulled this guy out. Like mm -hmm. I just pulled it. Like I, I didn't fumble on my phone. I knew I had this with me, and it's just some random. And you can see, like I've literally had this printed off for years and just carried it with me. It's crumpled up, and I probably would print a fresh copy off before we leave. 
Let's see, I think I shoved something down in here. Oh, two from my hydration bladder because I found that as I was walking out the door. And I'll show something else on that. My earbuds for that um, music thing. Let's see. There's nothing in the front pocket. The front pocket on this thing is like super, super tiny. So I think I've got like an old Sudafed in here because I always manage to be sick during deer season at home. So I had some old medicine in there. So on the front, this is Uncapagre. This is the jacket. And it folds down into itself. So yeah, there's your pillow. This totally could be your pillow. I mean, truly, this would be nice. I don't honestly even use a pillow at home most of the time. I just kind of just, oh, really? I just kind of just take it. Well, there's my pillow, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is very nice. I, I do really like this. I, you know, Dwayne, you've got the the Chamberlain, which is is heavier than this one, but it's bigger. Um, I've got the Catalyst jacket and this guy. You've got. A bigger puffy and a smaller puffy, so I think it's probably balanced now somewhere in the middle anyway. So I have a Thermarest Questar. This is a zero degree bag, so I also did not want to do um, heater body suit because it was 10 pounds and huge. So this guy, it's a mummy bag, but what was really, really nice, it's made like it's not claustrophobic. So you can totally get in and like you can like sprawl your legs out a little bit, you can lay on your side. Like, just roll yourself around in the bag, and it's got attachments for a sleeping pad. So, the sleeping pad attaches inside, like, the inside the bag. So, one problem I had, like, sleeping kind of on an incline, oh, right. you'd slide off that sleeping bag by the end of the night. So, this thing kind of attaches and holds them in place. Well, so, nice. I'm real excited to see how this guy does. I did get in it in my house, just like in my, in my office. Very warm, like, sweated in, like, a couple minutes. Right. So, excited for that guy. Binoculars and rangefinder, which I'll just have on me. So Vortex binoculars, SIG rangefinder. Paracord, which I might not bring mine since you've got a massive amount of paracord. Probably will leave this at home. I did pack this with us last time, but I think it stayed in the truck. Let's see. Front pocket. A bog pot attachment, just a shooting rest for it. Some scentless DO, just some roll on because the gel. Is there something else I forgot, man? My to of course the toothbrush. Well, I don't have. My, I didn't have my toothpaste because I didn't have a travel toothpaste with me. But toothpaste, scentless DO. I, I like this one. I had the gel, but that gel in Idaho, it was so cold. Shoving on your pits in the, in the morning. I guess it would be. It was, it was just like freezing cold. So this this guy's just like a roll on. So it's it's not bad. It says scentless, but you totally it smells. Like yeah, smells. Of course, but I also don't really care. The, it just we just. We don't break the polyester stuff out. If we've got our merino on, you don't need any of it. Man, speak for yourself. Here's, here's my prediction. You guys are going to pack all this stuff in, and you are like way more organized now. Different gear. You're both going to kill within the first 12 hours of the hunt, and you're going to leave. That's the way it works. Bro, I'm gonna I, I'll am gonna tell you. I'll tell you guys right now. You all were not with us when we were in Idaho the last time. That was some of the most misery that I have ever been in in my entire life. Mm -hmm. It was not fun. Like, I, if, there was if nothing all, fun about that trip. If, yeah. if, I, if I pack all of this heavy crap in, and I do kill in the first night, I will more than gladly carry that buck and all this heavy crap right back out, and I will have the biggest smile on my face that I've ever had. I agree. I agree. Yep. However, if I go four days, and I've slept outside, and I ain't killed nothing, all of this heavy crap will still allow me to walk out with a big old smile on my face. Yeah, you'd be comfortable. Yep. Whereas I could not do that the last time. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope we walk in, dude. I hope we walk in on, like, I hope we're walking in on after we get there mm -hmm. and we shoot two mule deer. That would be great. But I am absolutely prepared to not kill a deer at all again this year. Well, sure. But be comfortable the entire time. Yes. Well, and like I said, now, you know, we got burnt the last time. We had a we had an atypical experience, atypical weather. Right. Maybe we'll go through this year and see that we're over-preparing a little, and, yeah. and we might ease off the next mm -hmm. time. That's cool. But I'm, I am intentionally over-preparing this time. Yes. Same. I wanted no reason to complain yep. about 
want to leave and go somewhere else? No, there so. will not be no coming out. We are not going to no motels. We, if we go to the diner, it's because we've both killed bucks. Yes. You know, we are freaking hunting. Okay. Sounds good. I do have a hot hand. This one's a body warmer. And speaking of being a pansy. Yes, I do have it. I'm just saying. I've got circulation issues. I'm, I'm bringing just in case. Just in case we're sitting out there glassing and I'm real cold. I have a face shield for the airplane. Oh, so right. We, we have to have those on the airplane. have to have that. So I'm, I did bring, I do have one of these. And my glasses fog up. So this but I mean, it can be just the, the disposable deal. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's totally all. Well, I, I have this because I have to wear I wear them around anyway. So I just carry that with me. Titanium spork. I did have some folding plastic ones. I do still have those, but I decided to get the titanium spork instead. There was just it wasn't long enough, and you end up like getting your hand, mm -hmm. right. your dirty hand, down in that mountain house bag, and that was frustrating. Yeah. If, if if I was eating out of the pot. That would be fine with the little fold yeah. ones, but it's just not, it's not cool. Other side, I have hydration bladder. This one's actually got like, it's more for hot weather, but this is the one I have. Um, it's got like, you freeze it and it keeps your water cold, mm -hmm. but obviously I, I don't use that. Gotcha. That's some weight right there. It is. I, well, I, I needed, I think I had messed mine up and needed a new one for this past season, and I just grabbed one at Walmart. So I might switch and get something else. Um, let's see. I have something else for... This is also the blow-up seat pad. Oh, okay. so we got the same one. You, it takes like five breaths. And right. it, 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 it's, it's really nice. I mean, th they were running some kind of promotion on, on like Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like... Pay shipping, get a, a free seat pad. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. hell, why not? Wow. So I got one, and then like as I was checking out, it's like, hey, do you want one more for free? I was like, no, 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 nah, I don't want another one for free. Yeah, frick yeah. that. No, so I got one, and gave it to one. I'm like I don't need, it. I don't need two, but I'll certainly give it to someone else who needs one. Right. I do have have an Under Armour balaclava. I did not use it. Actually, I lost it. It was like down behind like a, a piece of furniture. I found it when I was cleaning some stuff. I have the Clement Static V insulated sleeping pad. So this one is like half an inch thinner than Dwayne's. I have not slept on this yet, I will say. But I was not uncomfortable with the cheapo, like, this thick pad. Because I, I really like it. Zach is not as fat as I am. I'm just more of a man. No. Says no. the guy with hand warmers. Hey, it's a body warmer. So, no, I, I, I'm, I like sleeping on my back and I like firm ground. So, it, th I'm, I would be absolutely shocked if this is not excellent. And the other one was not insulated. And this one is, is yeah. it's their most insulated one they've got. So, I'm pretty I'm excited. Sure good. Pretty excited, especially with that zero degree bag. Mm, I'm real yeah, excited. I think you're real excited. excited. So, this is, it's actually a spotter mount for the bog. It's got a window clip too. Are you gonna, are you gonna take that? Actually, I am gonna take that. Um, the only reason I'm actually gonna take it is I've got a phone mount that clips in here, so like different adap adapters fit. Because we're gonna be like, there's freaking no light at all, so I'm totally gonna like take and like take pictures and stuff. Like I just want to be. Well, we can use your camera to film and stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, you take the I've got extra adapter plates, so I mean, we could put something else on. But you know, just. Pivots around, good to go. But yeah, this is it's got a window attachment, so for the club, I planned on using this to, you know, hunt last season. I just never I kept forgetting. <laughs> forget, I, I, kept forgetting. I kept forgetting. So I, I, I brought this once and didn't bring the other piece, yeah. and then I, I brought the other piece and then left this bitch at home and I like what do you do, man? I just could not remember to bring everything. So I've got MSR, which obviously can't fly with it, but I brought it just representation that will probably have it. So this is my cooking apparatus, which I did not even get out because we just boiled water on Dwayne's and just dumped it in. But I, I did bring it just in case, and I have my stove, which also I had, tiny, and did not break out. This is an Etexity or something like that. It's pretty sweet though. I haven't hooked it up and tested it, but the little doodads, they, they flip around. and looks wild, man. It's, it's got its own built-in igniter that doesn't take a battery. Yeah, piezo electric. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I'll, I'll probably at least try it, but I have not tried it yet. Yeah, there's no reason to. But yeah, the the 
your stove fits like it, it spans around into oh, the rings. Cool. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. It was it was cheaper than the MSR one and had pretty good ratings. So minus the Crooks light. What did you say yours is? I think it's called Pocket Rocket. I believe it's. Oh, yours is literally on there. It's, minus it's the, MSR. I think it's minus the. Oh, yeah. Parker, I believe. Okay, mine is Crooks light. Uh, remember what it's actually called. Optimus. Or I guess it's the Optimus Crux Light. Yeah, it's the Optimus flavor. Yeah, Optimus Crux Light. And I was very, very satisfied. Of course, it's super tiny. Didn't look... Yours was, yours was all fancy, man. I was, that was cool. Mine is very much tiny. But uh, it, it did the job really That's well. It looks great. Yeah. yeah, the only thing that we had issues with, I think that the reason why we used more fuel... It was windy, like we said. Yeah. It, the the real jet boils have that windshield. Mm -hmm. you know, there's still some holes for air because it needs air, but yeah. there was a windshield to keep it going. We had some issues just with getting the flame hot enough yeah. with the wind. So I think we probably did burn through some extra fuel. And I'll have the same problem with mine too, but it was I'm nice. I'm not going to say that was a problem. You know, I actually take that with me sometimes just on day-long deer hunts around here. Because it, I, I oh, I, just, I think uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can make some hot chocolate. Or I, well, or on you my want. on my buck video on YouTube, the morning I killed my buck, Zach yeah. was fussing at me because my first part of my filming when I was in the blind, you can hear the hissing in the background, and it's me. Oh, the boy, I was making some kind of breakfast. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. They're, they're handy. You don't Apple have cobbler to or something. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. So you mentioned you're going to get the squeeze bag. I think you need to pick one of the, these bad boys up. So. This is the Sawyer Fast Fill Hydration Pack. So what this guy does, it screws into your Sawyer and it, it'll work. I've got the, the Sawyer Squeeze, fishing it around. So I've got the Sawyer Squeeze. So it's just literally bottle, a bottle adapter. Yeah. I, I had a Sawyer Mini the last time and it froze to the point that the fibers on the inside burst and it stopped working. Oh wow. So that, that's, like we literally shared the same hydration by the rest of the time. So that, that was not good. But what this guy does, you splice it in line with your hydration, your um, your bite valve, and you just unhook it. And then you put this in and squeeze in and you don't have to take your water out of your pack to fill it up. I see. So I think you totally need to get one of these. No. This yes. is what, no. This is what comes with this. Mine came with that it's, as well. It screws on the back of this. Of course, this won't be on here. I have to take. So you're this gonna have, you're gonna remove your bite valve every single time. No, this is not gonna be on here. Period. How are you filling your hydration bladder? When it, with in with the hole squeeze. of my hydration bladder. So you're gonna pull it out every time. Yeah, did that last year. Yes. So this will keep you from doing that, and this was like very cheap. So you we'll see how it. I'll watch you do yours, and we'll see. He's aggravated unpacking part of his back to get to the bladder. He'll realize that it's not that. Yes. We'll see. We'll see. It's okay. We'll see. It's okay. I'll let him I do might that. borrow one of your hand warmers too. You can do that. <laughs> I've got an extra pocket if you really need it. No, so I, I, I probably will not take all of this. This is just all the stuff that was in there. That's the other reason why I wanted this adapter. Well, no, this doesn't go back on this is the point. It's a, you, I know. You I put broke, your sucker thingy back on I broke, this. I also broke my, my mini because I was doing that. Uh, trying to get the tube off to warm it up and I broke it. I literally broke the valve off. So I just struggled. I just use iodine. I have one of those, but it's just for emergency purposes. Just whatever. I, I just use iodine tablets. All right. Oh, yeah. I, I thought about just doing that as backup, but I just haven't. Yeah. I don't mind that. Um, so I use it. The Idaho water, man, it just tastes so good. <laughs> Especially up where up where you're gonna be. Yeah. That was just so good water. And then filtering it too. You still don't even worry about it. It's just so fresh. Mm. There we go. You got it. So also wool undies. I might pick up some different ones. Maybe not. These were a Let's little. Screw something like that. Yeah. Then I will. I will fill this up. Put this on. Squeeze it into my bag. Repeat until my bag is full. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I'm gonna say buy once, cry once, and spend like ten bucks on getting an adapter, and I'll have to pull it out of your bag. But that's just me. I will let you do you. When your lines froze and you can't freeze it and you have to get it out of your pack anyway. Well, that's fine. So I'm, I'm taking two pairs of undies because, yes, two. I'm going to say two. Only because I think it just, it, 
you feel like a new man whenever you put on a, on a fresh pair of underwear, even though they didn't stink. Like, you smell yourself, you know? Yeah, I just don't. I, it just made me feel better. So these I did not have in Idaho. These are Wool X. So this is just a little bit heavier weight than, um, than what I had. The, the, this is comparable to the first light ones. It's my Wool X? Yes, it is. Because I, I got the same range as that. I don't remember if yours is the same. Probably is the same one. But yeah, I got Wool X base layers. I am, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a pair of the first light zip offs too, maybe. I don't know. Big money. I don't know. I'm, I'm have you seen decide. those bustle? The first lights. No, first lights new. They have thermals that are zip offs now, so the, you don't have to. You don't have to length. take your boots off. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've seen their version. I think Kui you might have some of those. Probably. I'm not sure, but yeah, I have seen that. I don't know if I've seen first lights. But. That was actually why I went with those Uncle Padre puffy, which I am 100 percent pleased with those, but. I got. I was so frustrated taking my boots on and off to put. And that's a simple thing, right? Guess, but put to put your thermals on and off because you can't walk with all those thermals on. You oh, sweat. Yeah. So I was. I thought that was a pretty cool deal they did. But you said Kuyu already has. I think they already. Had, I think. Yeah. Only two. I was, I was thinking they already. I think they do so, too. Yeah. I think they do too. Yeah. So now I get into the first light layers, and I, I've seen these other guys and. Like you'll see, probably more like Buskell, they're more manly than us, but they, they're running and have like nothing, you know? He doesn't disagree. No, he's like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I see their gear list and then I'm like, holy crap, I have a lot of layers. And you'll see these people like, man, I'd be burning up. And I'm sitting there thinking back and I was like, I was frozen wearing all this. So I have a Kim hoodie. So you have a Klamath. You have a Klamath hoodie. I have a Klamath too. So I have a kiln hoodie. This one's actually really nice. I did wear this, and it was very hot on the club, and it was it was very comfortable still. So that was nice. Klamath, just quarter zip. I actually like this one better than that one. We are going to be... Gonna be guys, we guys we won't clothes. even deer hunt, man. We're just going to be sleeping in camp and hanging out. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm not going to deer hunt. I'm just going to follow you guys. <laughs> I'm going to camp. <laughs> I'm just going to pill for a lot of this clothing you've got that you don't take. You better take everything with you because I'm going to pill for your camp. Just for the clothes. Cattle's jacket. Very nice. Cattle's pants. Uncompagre pants. So ready. Those, are the, those are the puffies I've got. Yeah, the same ones you've got. Yeah, yeah they, these are awesome. Dude, it's you still, are really done. No, like this is a, this is a literal yeah. crap ton of clothes. Once again, I'm 100% hoping it's nice. Yeah, they were facing great. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Very Padres, all the puffy stuff from First Light, it, mm -hmm. it's money. I mean, really, it's money. So I'm, I'm very pleased with all that. I mean, I, I can't, I really don't have any complaints. I, I might eventually get rid of, like, that kiln hoodie. I mean, we'll see. We'll see if I end up being really warm this year. I don't know, dude. My philosophy is, is better to have and not need than to need and not have. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing, I don't, I'm hoping like it's not just I sweat so much because I've got all these layers on and then just get cold from the sweat. So I am well, definitely... That's the beauty of layers. Just I take know. your freaking yeah, time and take... the beauty of wool. I mean, you know, yes. if you're damp, you're still going to be warmer than if you were wearing uh, just synthetic, in my opinion, and definitely better than cotton, of course. Absolutely. Bus gonna embarrass us, man. Yeah. Okay. He light his pack out of the right. tree. Let's see. Well, so yeah. now, gentlemen, the man that's hunted for many, many years in the mountains and is gonna <laughs> put us to shame. Well, I'm packed more for uh, probably an earlier season hunt. Uh, oftentimes, whenever it's really cold, I don't take a tent or anything. I just sleep under a little tarp. I make a lean-to, or I just take a military issue Gore-Tex bivy sack, and my sleeping bag goes down in that. And uh, that seems to do fine because I'm not, I'm not worried about bugs, you know. Well, actually, you get a look at the forecast. But most of the time, even if it's light snow or light rain, I'm okay with that. Uh, I bought some really thin, cheap tarps that were, I think they were six by eight. And I got them at this little tool store in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I can't think what it's called. It's one of those outlet stores. And they're really thin. They're not durable at all. I mean, it's one of those things, if you put it, you know, uh, over a wood stack or something, and the wind blew on it for two or three days, it'd probably tear holes in it. But it's good enough just for a few nights up in the hills. They're super small. But I bought a bunch of those things because they were cheap. And now I've, I've slept under them several times. Like I said, Gore-Tex sack around my sleeping bag. 
and a little lean-to made, but my head goes under, just in case it's going to mm -hmm. actually rain some. I can have my head out of the bag and not get rain on. So I do that a lot of the time, which eliminates a lot of weight and a lot of trouble. And you can set up camp like that. I mean, it is nothing. It's just take out the sleeping bag, take out the bivy, and load your camping. Um, but I didn't do that for the purpose of this video because I thought, you know, we'll just see what all will fit in this bag. This is a new bag to me. I usually just one pack like you, but last year I started with the uh, Mystery Ranch Metcalf. So I used this in Idaho last year, uh, but I only spent uh, a night or two out. We really were predator hunting more than we were deer hunting, so we just went up in the mountains of deer hunt just a little bit. Didn't have any luck left. Uh, like I said earlier, I normally keep my sleeping bag on the outside just because they take up so much room. Uh, in here, I have a snug pack 30 degree bag and I use that early season like when I'm bow hunting after uh, elk or mule deer in Idaho uh, or around here for that matter. If it's not going to be any colder than about 30 at night, I use it. Um, I do have a sleeping bag a little liner I take sometimes if it's questionable like maybe it's going to get down in the 20s. That liner is just a little thin polypropylene Sleeping bag. Have you ever seen one? They're just a little. They're really, really small, but oh, they're yeah, real stretchy, and they'll they'll fit you about you know from your feet to your chest. It just gives you a little, a few extra degrees of protection. So is, that is what you're taking, because you said down to about thirty. You know it's going to be less than. No, I'll probably. This is just what I grab. It's what I grab easier. You know, like I said, like I said, I'm setting this up. I have this bag set up right now as if I'm going on more of a earlier season hunt. Okay. So technically, so, this technically, isn't what you're going to have for no. that time of year. All right. I'll take my zero degree bag, so it'll be about this length, but three or four inches bigger. Well, yeah. you've got, you've got, the, I've got basically the same bag you do. Yeah. See how big? It'll be stashed on the outside. Yeah. So regardless of which bag I take, it's on the outside. That's still impressive that you sleep like that, because that's basically how. I mean, that's basically how me and Zach slept the last time having, having a Walmart tent. We might as well have taken a tarp instead of the Walmart tent. But man, that yeah, was I mean, just so it's just so time. miserable, man. Yeah, we're but well, once so you've got a good sleeping bag, though, when I get in my marmot zero degree bag, I mean, unless it's below zero, I am not getting cold. It is right. not going to happen. There's just no way. I mean, it's not possible. If anything, I'm hanging a leg out of the thing because I'm hot. I mean, right. it's. 20 degrees outside. I'm, I'm getting too hot. Is yours, is yours the lithium or similar? It is. It's lithium membrane. They don't actually make that anymore. So uh, mine actually has a waterproof, the outer is actually a waterproof shell. So you can camp in the oh. snow. So I can sleep on a sleeping pad in the snow. That was based, like that. for this, for this is just the plain lithium. That literally was the only negative that I could find about this bag was that it is not extremely um, water resistant water right? resistant yeah I mean I'm sure the day but we're, we're going to be in the tent well yeah, it's irrelevant well I sleep in a heavy a lot and like I said if you put that over your head your breath will there will be a lot of condensation on your bag and that, I, I've that, been sleeping bag pretty that's wet that's got that D, D, D whatever or yeah, something, D, something D, D, or something, or something like well mine is waterproof on the outside and I shouldn't say waterproof that makes it sound like you could literally sleep in the creek and you can't do that but I mean it can light you can have some light rain light snow you know your breath and a bivy condensing on it that's all fine or whatever so now that does though make it a little less compressible you have to be careful how you pack it up because you know, when you're stuffing that sleeping bag, you know, you're squashing the air out pretty easy. Well, when it's a waterproof sleeping bag, it kind of holds the air. So mm -hmm. you've got to really make sure you stuff the foot part first and really compress it, or you're like, man, I'm never going to get this stuff right. in this bag. You know? So um, anyway, that's the sleeping system for now. Let's see what we've got in here. Up here, I have my emergency kit. I keep a PLV in here in case I really get hurt in trouble. I have um, uh, my water filtration stuff is in here. I normally use iodine tablets, but I also have a Sawyer in here just in case I need it. I have some uh, two sources of fire. Uh, I have a uh, striker and I have just a regular uh, lighter and some wet fires. I like to use wet fire. I never use those or not. Little fuel cubes, wet fires. We use those. 
I love wet fires. They're pretty small. I mean, that's comparable to the same kind of the, the mm -hmm. Vaseline stuff. Oh, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, so I use these little wet fires. They're good. I've been starting fires for the last several years. Um, so that's my little emergency kit there. Um, this is, I think this is my, my light sources. I usually carry at least two sources of light. So I've got a headlamp and a little hand torch here. I'll take triple A's and of course I've got extra triple A's down in here. I do carry a little pair of earplugs down in here also, while they're in this bag, I don't know. But I have a little pair of earplugs just in case my gun is off zero and I need to shoot a few times. Mm -hmm. I don't wreck my ears because you know how that is. Yep. Uh, toiletries, toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, I have a little pill bottle in here where I keep a few Benadryl, a few aspirin, a few whatever. I just mix them together because they all look different. I know what they are. So I have a bunch of bottles. The med kit. Yeah. I keep a few things like he's, that. He's the med kit carrier. The med, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I mean, I, we don't have like a, I don't have like a one eggs buy or anything. We just kind yeah. of grab some stuff and, and yeah, you know, I, I've got to assemble it, I, you know. Yeah. I just kind of put a few things together based on the time of the year. I mean, if it's warm at all, I got Benadryl in there because I don't know what to be in dust and pollen and blah, 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 yeah. all that stuff. But yeah, I have like stuff. Benadryl, Imodium, Tylenol, that right. kind of stuff. Now the front pouch right now is empty here. Uh, I'm to put a little note in there. Uh, don't have anything in it. Normally it would probably have a little bit of food or this and that. Oh, and this, I might have to say this. When I'm walking in, of course my gun's in my hand. I wear a knife. I wear my knife on my hip all the time. Rarely is it off of my body and in my bag. It's uh, about a five or six inch long fixed blade with a little multi-tool and a little pouch that's also in the same sheath and a little sharpener in there also. But it's always pretty much on my person. I hate for it to not be on my person. Um, my rangefinder is normally in my pocket. Binoculars on my chest. Uh, they're not really in my pack. And also on the waist belt of my pack, and this is something that you guys ought to do. On the waist belt, I keep a little zip bag that attaches to it and my video camera's in there. Because you know, if you're hiking and your video camera's yeah. stuffed down in here and you walk up on that bull moose coming across some meadow or something. Well, he's not going to wait on you to yeah. take your pack off. You just swing it off your back and dig in it. You're never going to get it. But this way, I just unzip one little thing, pull the camera out and film. And that's helped me get film of moose, caribou, deer, uh, grouse. I mean, just anything I want to film anywhere I'm at, I have that little uh, video camera in there. And that, that's really coming well, handy. When we were in, I don't do this like on the club around here or anything. <clears throat> The last time we were in Idaho, the first light has the suspenders. Yeah. And I just took the suspenders off and I had ran the, the suspender through the back of the case of my camera. So mm -hmm. my camera was right here, but it was right. on my suspenders. I got you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just got to have it handy. Yeah. Okay. And once again, I'm kind of like exact. My stuff's probably not in the exact order I would have it in uh, when, I, when I walk. You know, usually I'm one of these guys, I pack it and I repack it and I try to get it just right because I want to have the heaviest object, not in the bottom, but maybe like at the top of the lower third and against my lower back. That's where I like the heaviest thing to be, which in this case is, is my little tent I've got in here. And, uh, and then everything else is just kind of wherever. So I got a puffy jacket. I went cheapo on this. I was actually in a department store. I think it was a Belk several years ago. They were having a sale. Springtime and all their wintertime stuff was on sale. This is just a dark green goose down jacket. It doesn't say what fill it is because it's not, you know, what they need to market that in bulk. It's probably a 600 fill. Uh, but it's just a super cheap, dark green puffy. Stuff's up nice and small. I've been using it ever since. It's not super durable. I wouldn't want to walk a bunch of briars yeah. in. The material would probably pick. But it's been really good. So I, I, I'll put that on when I'm going to glass. Or if it's really cold around the camp at night, I'll put that on. Uh, like you guys, I'm a mountain house guy for the most part. I have to have granola with blueberries. Yes. It's fantastic. Ah, it's so fantastic. Good. I love it. I mean, I can just like eat it right now. Yes. Like, it's so good. Yes. There's a lot of calories in there. Every morning, I'm having this when I'm out. So for every, I mean, it's just, I love it. Uh, I have a sweet so, sour corn. And, I, and I told him that. So he didn't have any of those last no. time, but I bought several of those and like the dessert ones. And even my daughter, uh, I have made her several and we've yeah. eaten them. Like you literally could, like you could just make yourself one yeah. at home for dessert. Yeah. 
and you would be very happy to eat it. It's that good. They're very good. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with MREs. I think these are similar to some sandwiches that are in MREs. These Bridgeford, they're little individually packed sandwiches. You can get like, it's almost, it's almost like, a, uh, it's almost like a Hot Pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, you can eat them cold. Um, this is barbecue, I believe. I think they have a sweet and sour pork, maybe a barbecue chicken. Oh no, this is Italian sausage with sauce. There won't be much sauce, they're pretty dry. Like if you were trying to eat this without a drink, I mean it would like totally kill you. Like you've got to have something to drink. But this is a nice little something yeah, to eat. This is kind of heavy on the stomach, it's yeah. not bad. I mean, and of course, I think I'm going to have a couple of, you know, some peanut butter crackers in here, a bag of m and &M. There's going to be some other stuff kind of stuffed in here. So here's my little stove, my little MSR stove. You know, I'm not going to try to pull it out of there like everybody else's, you know, it's just little three fold out arms, you know. Stove fuel, which I have fuel I'll leave out there at a friend's house. So this is just like I said for show. Um, I have a big thick pair of extra socks and like everybody else, uh, merino wool t-shirt, merino wool tops and bottoms. These are, I don't know who makes these, Scent Shield, whoever that is. I thought you brought the first light tops and bottoms, those super heavy. Ones. I do have those. I have the first light uh, furnace. I didn't put those in there. I would probably have those on. Yeah. You know, ah, well, I have them on when I walk in. I don't know. Once again, that's just kind of a loose, loose, loosely organized pack. But one of those would be on. Actually, to be honest with you, those are warmer. I would probably have those in this pack, and I might have these on. Right. You know, sweat, sweat, sweat these up on the way in. Uh, like everybody else, some smart wool, merino wool underwear. Everything for me is wool. I mean, the socks, the pants, and the underwear, t-shirt. I mean, I just make every single thing wool. You accept, I'll take a rain suit. And of course, the puffy or whatever. There'll be a few outer items. Uh, I, and actually, I have my Kuyu Yukon rainwear. This stuff is awesome. It costs an arm and a leg. But I was getting sick of going to Alaska and getting wet. And so I bought this stuff and I haven't been wet since. Unless you count hiking up a mountain and sweating in the skin of the gear. Um, but it really is worth the money. I mean, I think the set's about, it's about 700 bucks to get the set. Woo! It's a lot, but it's worth it. I mean, like, it is really <laughs> worth it. Like, if I wear this pair out, first thing I'll do is buy another pair. Like, it's, it's that good to me. Well, I think that's, a, that's that same kind of deal. Like, yeah, what I good. keep trying to emphasize about our about our first terrible Idaho experience. Like, mm -hmm. the price of comfort yeah. is, it's very high, and it's worth paying. Yep. It, yeah. it is well, worth paying. Every couple years, I was ordering like a Cabela's or a Bass Pro, uh, Gore-Tex MT50 outfit. You know, yeah, it was great, it was fine for hunting deer on the back 40, it was okay, but just to be honest with you, on a week-long backpack hunt, it was just not, it was just not doing me right. You know, it was, it was failing. Uh, this stuff, I mean, I've just said in pouring rain. Let me see long. So, so this pant and top is seven hundred dollars. It's about that's about seven hundred bucks. Yeah, I don't know which one that is, but so that's the jacket. I guess feels good. It's nice. I mean, and as far as rainwear goes, I mean, no rainwear is quiet. I mean, I guess sure. there's some yeah. place, but like as far as hard shell rain gear goes, it's as quiet as any there is. I've walked around in a, a lot. I mean, it's got a little bit of a stretch to the and, material. And you can absolutely tell that it is very durable. And it has been very durable. Very, much, very much different than your typical rain gear. Yeah, it's been great. Like I said, as yeah. soon as I wear that one out, I'll be buying another one. No doubt. i got a little paracord down in there. I don't think I've ever been on a camping trip that I didn't use paracord. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're lashing something or you're hopefully you're hanging quarters yes. in a tree somewhere. Okay. Now this, actually, I put this in here. And I was saying earlier uh, that I don't carry it much. I used to carry this little tent everywhere. This is actually a little Coleman Peak One tent I've had for, gosh, I mean, I might have had this in 20 years. Uh, it is a non-freestanding single, I think, I haven't used it, I can't remember. I think it's got a single pole. Uh, but like I said, it's non-freestanding. I call it a 1.5 man. Uh, you know, you and I could definitely lay down in it. You kind of shoulder to shoulder, but you could make it work. No gear. But if we're just one guy, you have plenty of room for your pack, boots, gun, you, you're going to have definitely enough room. So I take this, if I knew it was going to be raining on me, 
I would take this. If I knew it was going to just like pour down snow, well, I might take this, but it's not freestanding. I won't say it's ready to handle a big right. snow load. But like I said, most of the time I don't take it, but for purposes of this video, I'll put it in there. There uh, should be a little ground sheet in there. Uh, if you're not used to camping in a tent, you've got to have a ground sheet or you're going to have a wet floor. But so, there's the tents, and I have got. I always carry a black trash bag or two for whatever reason. Maybe for trash. Maybe I forgot. I like to carry a seat pad sometimes. Uh, but if I don't want to carry a seat pad, uh, sometimes I'll just sit on that black trash bag and keep my butt from getting wet. Okay. I have game bags. I like tag bags. I wash them, reuse them. Uh, here I have some gloves. Um, some rubber rubber gloves and a little bit of orange flagging tape uh, just in case I need to mark the side of the kill. I keep a little piece, this has traveled with me everywhere, and I've used this. It's kind of dirty. It used to be Blaze Orange. Whichever bag has evidence of sex in it, this gets tied onto the bag. So when the man stops me and says, I need to check out your game, blah, blah, blah. and I've had that happen before, I know where evidence of sex is. I don't have to dig through four or five bags, like, oh, it's not that quarter, oh, it's not that quarter, oh, right. it's not that quarter, it's this quarter. It's experience right there. That goes that, with me. That, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is experience. There you go. And like I said, the orange flag is just in case i got to leave something. I can just put a couple flags in the trees yeah. and come back and find it. All right, and like I said, my knife uh, is already on my hip, so. Where's the Crown Royal? <laughs> the Crown Royal? <laughs> I think a friend of mine, I don't even like Crown Royal. <laughs> Uh, I sometimes take a little chamois towel. I, once again, I've had this for hmm, at least 20 years. Just a little camp towel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just something to That's another get thing that I've left out. In the creek and hat, wipe off a little bit, hand. something, you know. Dry off a little bit if you're super sweaty. And my camping pad is a Thermarest Neo Air. So, uh, I think they might make a few that are a little better than this now. It's definitely warm enough. I don't... I'm a pretty heavy guy, unfortunately. Uh, I don't squash this down to the ground flat. Like, this keeps me off the ground. Uh, it is noisy. That's a common complaint, and it really is noisy. Uh, I did, Dwayne had his, who makes sure it's Big Agnes? Big Agnes. That was set up in here the other day, and I laid down on it. That's the first thing I noticed. It didn't make the crinkling noises that this yeah. is. This definitely, well, I can't really duplicate it here, but when you lay on the thing, it just, it sounds plasticky. It's kind of noisy. Like, I've heard people complain that whoever they're with, if they have this, that's who gets bothered the most. Mm -hmm. You know, in the middle of the night, right. that person shifts and this yeah. makes some noise. So, you know, uh, Brad will just have to deal with it if he mm -hmm. hears me. Although Brad and I normally sleep in different shelters. Uh, he has a, I believe it's a Hilleberg one-man tent. Uh, and I was just, you know, in a bivy or under the stars or something somewhere else. Um, that's that. And that might be all that's in there. Nope, I take that back. I have a saw. Right. I do have a little saw in case I need to cut up a little wood. Uh, hopefully in case I need to work on some game, that kind of thing. I'm not sure who makes this. It's a little cheap saw I picked up at Sportsman's Warehouse in Idaho one year because my buddy had the same one and I loved it. And it was this way half of what mine did. I was carrying a Wyoming saw. Now, if I knew I had to get heavy duty, I would carry that one. Outdoor edge. Oh, outdoor edge. Uh, if, I, if I knew I was going to get heavy duty needing a saw quite often, man, a Wyoming saw is the bomb. But it's just the thing's it's heavy. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, not, it's not lightweight, but that Wyoming saw is great. Um, let's see. I have a water bottle on the side. We won't count that. It's, it's empty anyway. Keep that on the side. And I think that's it. Uh, I did notice one thing I don't have in here. I don't have my toilet paper in here. Got to have the toilet paper. Yeah, man. Bubble and lunch, baby. I don't have my hats in here. I always take a hat and I always take a little sweater cap. You know. And my gloves will be stuffed in my pocket. Like you said, a lot of the clothing you have in your bag, yeah, it's you're going to be wearing it. Or if you get a little hot halfway in, you're just going to stuff it under some strap in your bag and it's, you're gonna look yeah you know, we always look kind of crazy you know when you walk in you got stuff hanging off and everything else oh the most important part thing okay so this is the metcalf mystery ranch 
And this is what they call the God Light Frame, if I'm not mistaken. So one of the reasons I went with this bag is, okay, you saw how it was packed up. So I walk into camp. I set up. I hunt for a few days. I don't have any luck. All right? I pack it up. I walk back out. But let's say I go in. I set up camp. And I do have luck. I do kill something. Okay. These straps on the side here, these straps here and here, I can loosen those up and pull the bag away from the frame. So I could stuff a quarter down in here if I want and walk out with it and not have to bloody up the inside of my pack. Uh, also too, and this is one of the reasons I got it, I can unplug this little guy here. I get my fingers on there. So still tucked in there, I have this. So this is also a Mystery Ranch bag that is made to fit on this frame. This is the mule. It is just a day pack. It also has the little shelf. You know, you can... Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you can I'll, make I'll this... this up so they can see. Yeah. yeah. So this little one, this is small. I mean, this is like, I don't know, 2,000 inches maybe, 1,800 inches. This is little. This is like 4,200 or something. Yeah. So this is just a little day pack. Uh, if I want to lose some of this, I can just put my lunch, a few game calls, the stuff to field dress enamel with, and just take off. And it's just a little, it's a little less pack. You know, it's, it's not making as much noise. It's not weighing me down as much. Um, another way I planned on using this, and I have not had a chance yet, is if I'm really going somewhere and I got to be loaded down, is I could fill this pack up. I could fill the main Metcalf up. I'll loosen the met cap from the frame, tuck this in there just like a person would a quarter, cinch it down, and walk in. So now I've got these two packs full of junk. Uh, I'm sweating it, I'm hating it, it's heavy, but I've got it all in one load. Now, once again, if I don't have any luck, I just bring it back out the same way. But if I do have luck, so I'm not the kind of guy who can pack out a deer in one trip, and obviously nobody can pack out a elk in one trip. So um, if I have luck, then what my plan is, I will leave this with whatever's in it at camp, and I will take the Metcalf and a load of meat out. You know, I'll use the freighter shelf thing. When I get to the car, I will take the Metcalf off the frame. I will leave it at the car. Obviously, I will leave that quarter at the car. I will walk back in with just a naked frame, which weighs nothing, and I will hook this on, which is lighter and easier to maneuver, and I will walk out with a load of meat. And if that's, if that's everything that I'm done, if not, then I'll, if, I'll empty the contents of this bag into the car, still leave it attached to the frame, walk back out. And those will be as minimal as possible. Yeah. That way I don't have this huge bag. And I can carry a lot of gear, you know. So that's pretty much where I'm at. I really want to try this. I just haven't had a reason to try this yet. This could be the year, I don't know, once I start packing stuff up. Yeah. And especially if it's cold and my clothes are a little bulkier. Is that, that's what you use when you went hiking every day. Yes, I used this the other day. Yeah, I used to have like five or six buckles that change them in and out. So, um, I'm anxious. Like I said, I used this last year's season. Well, I used both of these last year's season, and I was I was pretty pleased. It's just, very lightweight. Just you've yet to get to do the meat deal with it. Oh, yeah, I haven't hauled any meat out on it, and I haven't gone anywhere deep enough for long enough that I needed to have both packs filled with crap. And that's what I've got, gentlemen. I'm sure there's one or two things I've forgotten, but... That's pretty, I think I can make it pretty well on there. I would need a couple a couple more uh, mountain house meals to really live very long, or else I'm going to have to definitely kill something. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I didn't bring rain gear. So, it's all yours, remember that. Which I, I didn't pull it out. I'll look at the weather. Since we're not shipping our stuff, I'll look and see. If it's if it's going to rain, I'll bring it. My, the catalyst stuff has a little bit of water repellent on it. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't sit out in a downpour. And my rain gear's... I mean, yeah. It's like Sam's Club stuff, so it's not going to do. It'll it'll keep me dry for a little while, but I, I might bring it if it's going to rain. I'm not going to bring it if it's not going to rain. I, I use mine just to turn the wind too, because I mean, if you can just keep the wind off your body, I mean, it's right. so huge. Yes. Yeah, we we packed our rain gear last time and didn't think about that. Yeah, we probably should have done that. Oh yeah, man, this that would have turned the wind. It'll turn the water. Turn the wind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Game bags. I didn't bring my game bags. So I probably... uh, yeah, too, we're both not going to need them. I'll have plenty. All right. How many you got? Because as soon as you say that, you know you both kill something. No, I've got, well, these are the ones that I, I had, I 
I can't. It, it packed my whole deer out this year. I can't remember if I still had another game bag left or not. But okay. Absolutely works. For Is that me. on the bone when you pack it out? On the bone. Okay. Yeah. Well, once you, well, especially once you take the meat off the bone. I mean, unless we literally killed two deer at the same time, but you still can't carry it all. I mean, you know, for that matter, you can take it back to camp, tie it up in a tree, and get your bag off. And yeah. I'll be anxious to see how your all's gear performs. Where I'm planning on going, um, it's really not that bad of a walk. I mean, it's two miles. It's not It's not very far off the road. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why more people don't hunt there. Maybe they do, and I just don't know it, but uh, it doesn't seem like they do. Well, but I'm planning on making two trips, actually. I'm going to walk in a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to come back because water is questionable up yeah. there. Uh, I'm going to make a second trip because I'm going to go in the day before the season starts. And I'm going to set up a really comfortable camp. Also, it's going to kind of establish my presence. People are going to see my vehicle parked at the trailhead. If they go up in there, they're going to see a tent or two set up, you know, that kind of thing. So I think it establishes my presence before opening day. And... Um, but I'm going to walk back in with, uh, you know, maybe two gallons of water, which uh, it sounds awful, but I, I would like so to have we're, um, we're going to do this. I would time. like to have a little extra, so I'm going to make a second trip because it's just a little extra exercise, a couple hours more walk, uh, and I'll be empty on the way back down. No big deal. So I'll grab one or two extra things, you know, for that trip. But I want it to be stuff. I don't want it to make two trips out unless I'm carrying meat out. Right. So whatever I'm carrying in, I want it to be something like. If I carry in two gallons of water and I don't drink it all, you can bet your hand in when I carry it out. I mean, I'm going to dump the water out and carry it in the jug out, of course. But, um, but yeah, I, I want it to be things I, I don't have to carry out heavy at yeah. the same time. Yeah. I think we got some pretty, pretty neat looking stuff. Yeah, I think it'll be good to see, especially how we end up. You know, if we're recording video while we're there, how we're, we're enjoying it. Yeah. In the you know in the middle of it because once we get home we'll probably forget if something yeah you know the the little details so it'll be good to see what happens I'm hoping that we're gonna be real comfortable and you know if something's questionable you can always leave it in your car because I mean you, you yeah. walk in and you struggle in and you could always leave a little extra few full, uh, food a few extra batteries or a no a change of clothes or a heater body suit or anything you could you could leave it in the car. And at least it's kind of comforting to know, regardless what happens to me out here, I could walk in a few hours and have a dry set of clothes if something just crazy happens, you know. And also, if you walk out empty to pick something up, you know, then you realize, oh, no, this walk isn't that bad after all. Yeah. So, that's ours, what I'll do. I'll do. ours is a 1400 foot elevation gain. Ooh. So, it's gonna, um, I won't have that. It's not gonna be super fun coming in and out, but we'll, we're gonna make it happen. Two gallons of water in. Well, we're we are ta we're taking our time. Yes. And we're probably not, we're not going to pack the water all the way in. Not all yeah. the water. You know, we'll probably cache some water halfway. I, I, I think though that um, looking at the map, I, I don't think that we are initially going to have to hike all the way into what we would you know what we were initially calling the prime area. Mm -hmm. It is, and that's another reason for bringing the spotter. The way it lays, we're probably going to have a, a very tough, but only probably about a mile to two mile hike to a really, really good glassing spot that is going to, we, we may be able to, well, obviously everything looks different when you're actually there, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking we might be able to, to set up there and start there and actually just spend the first day glassing from there mm -hmm. and see what we can see because yeah. that point gets you up really high but once you're, once you're on top, you're looking out two different valleys that yeah. are very, 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 very mm -hmm. long. And so, I think on the other end of that valley, there is a water source. So I'm thinking, you know, you're going to see deer going up to get water and hopefully coming back down. Because in, in the middle of the valley, there's gonna, there is some seasonal kind of drainage, it looks like. And, you know, when it rains, there's going to be some. So there should be some vegetation in the bottom. I'm hoping we'll see, you know, deer moving around from that vantage point and no we're in the right spot. So 1,400 feet of elevation gain. So over there at the club, if you're at the silage pit, if you walk from the silage pit to the top of the mountain, that's 500 feet of elevation gain. Mm, 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 mm. So it would be like doing that three mm -hmm. times. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not excited. But I know there's a right. place in Augusta County I hunt, and in, I think in less than a mile you climb a thousand, and I will say it gets your attention. Yeah. I mean, I carried some water up there one time because it's dry on top. We used to hunt the top before we realized that all the deer were in the 
uh, laurel covered you know, creek bottoms. We used to hunt that top. I mean, the view was beautiful. Just didn't see that many deer. <laughs> so I mean, if you're going for pictures, it was awesome. You could feel something. <laughs> yeah, it was right. not so awesome. So, but I used to walk up there, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's a pretty good hike. Well, you know, we're gonna take our time. Not gonna get in a hurry going in. Yeah. Well, that's why I said I'm going in the day before the season starts. So I'm really not going in a hurry because I can't shoot anything anyway. Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna have. A, but you take our stuff. Yeah, I'll do yeah. that. Sure. We'll be alright. We'll be fun. It'll be fun. You know. Good times. Well, this will probably be the last podcast or video or anything we do about this trip before we actually do this trip, I think. So should be. I say so. I know my video that I'm doing on getting prepared on the physical side of things, it's it definitely won't be ready till after hunting season. So I'm gonna include some deer hunting around here in that too probably. So yeah, it might be after the first of the year. Yeah. Yeah, because that's more fitness. It's more fitness yeah. oriented. Just On the fitness side of it. Yeah. yeah. So this is probably it. Next next stuff will be legit reports from ground zero. So, the pump thing. I wonder what the, wonder what the audience thinks. Like these jokers aren't going to shoot anything. What a bunch of crazy idiots. That's right. Yeah. Bunch of losers. You never can tell. Well... I won't say it can't get any worse than it was the last time, <laughs> but I feel like there's nowhere but up to go. Sure, so, sure, absolutely. Let's hope so. Even if we don't kill nothing and have better weather, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, you, you really did get hit bad with the weather that year. That, that, that really is bad. The second half of the week, or the sec, you know, the second. The, the, the third quarter of the week, I guess, was way better. Yeah. It got a little better, but by that time, we were just beat to death, man. Mm -hmm. 40 degrees then felt like 75 degrees. It's like, oh my God, it's finally 40 degrees out. It feels great. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's hot today. A balmy feel. Yeah. Jeez, it's freaking 40 degrees now. <laughs> well, gentlemen. It's been fun. It Enjoyed seeing fun. all your stuff, and I'm yeah. really glad I got to see that pack because I've been looking at that one online. Oh, I yeah. got to see it in person. Yes. Yes. Tackle had yes. a mystery ranch. The down. mystery ranch. I'm down with the mystery ranch. I like it. It's lightweight. Everly Stock Team Milk Pack for sale, yeah. guys. If y'all want one, mess. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, after Idaho, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's been fun. Good times. Thanks, guys. Let's pack it up. See you all next time.